Johnny Sig here doing a solo review of Canelo versus Plant. Wow. What an awesome fight and a whole lot of stuff to discuss here, man. I mean, guys, let's face facts. Canelo's got to be one of the greatest fighters on planet Earth right now. Um, his aggression, he is relentless. He's got great trajectory of his shots. Puts great combinations together. The first time he sent Plant down. I'm going to go right there. We're going to jump forward to round number 11. Beautiful left hook. Right uppercut. Left uppercut. He had Plant drunk at the club. Right? He goes to the pillar. He walks across the ring. Does Plant. Doesn't look well. And what does Canelo do? He doesn't play with his food. He eats and destroys. Seeks and destroys. Plant. Big time here. And it was... Dude, there was no mercy in this dojo. Like right hand after right hand after right hand. But what I like the way he set it up with the second knockdown is the same way it was with the first knockdown. Left hook. And then no mercy. Notice what... Canelo did what is positioning of his foot jockeying for position, okay? He was always in line to pretty much just set himself up to hurt his opponent in the right way with trajectory of shot. So now we have a situation where you see Canelo where everything's working in concert together. His mind, his arms, and his leg work. The way he's moving over laterally and setting things up or getting proper position for power punches and using leverage. Here's my point. For Caleb Plant, he did do a good job, okay? He did do an excellent job. He took a hell of a lot of punishment in this fight. And I gotta say this. I give him a lot of respect. Caleb Plant... I, his story, I mean, man, it, it's, it's one of the most incredible stories. It's like, you're going to make a movie out of it. Okay. Um, you know, obviously rest in peace to his daughter. He's got a, a wonderful wife and a great life and he's an awesome fighter. And this does not set him back at all. He lost to one of the greatest fighters on planet earth. Like I was just saying, uh, right now, the thing is for plant. This is what Canelo does. He doesn't enable you to start getting a rhythm. He gets his own rhythm and he's like going to dictate how he wants you to fight and how you're going to face him. So the point is that Caleb Plant was not able to move laterally or actually stand that proper position to counter with uh, jabs or get respect is what I'm looking for here. Okay. Move to the right, move to the left move backwards, and unfortunately, Caleb had to move, in, on his behalf, backwards a whole lot, whereas Canelo was like, man, so aggressive and so confident, and for Plant, like, he needed to get that respect early, in my opinion, in order to do anything damaging. Unfortunately for Plant, that never happened, and... I mean, maybe he had one round, I thought, Plant did in the fourth round where he started touching Canelo a little bit. But then Canelo adapted, downloaded the content, figured it out. So I'm going to keep this really short and sweet. This one's going to be under 10 minutes, okay? But my reaction to this fight is that Canelo, now we look at his resume over the past several years. Multiple weight classes, looking better and better. Knocking people out, taking on very solid opponents, unifying, okay, titles while also winning um, other titles at different weight classes. What the fuck is going on right now? Dude, Canelo is something that he's a force to be reckoned with. I'm telling you, man, like he's doing something special. So then people say, Johnny, what do you want next? What do you want next? And I'm not going to go into super detail about the breakdown of this fight. I mean, we all saw it. The whole world was watching. 
And, you know, I work at a restaurant where I bartend, host, um, also serve. And my kitchen was on fire when Canelo was fighting. It's like everything is shut down. He's got something that is that it factor. Like when Manny Pacquiao fought in his heyday, where the crime rate in the Philippines went down and it just like everyone was celebrating and watching the fight. When Canelo had won, I was actually serving a table and making drinks. And then I heard the music pop off and the celebration happened in the kitchen. And I was like, this guy's got something special. He's got something special. So who can answer this? I'm not talking about star power, but to make people engaged in celebrating someone that much. Who could put forth a performance such as Canelo did, okay, last night. I'm doing this on Sunday. So it was last night out here in Vegas. Uh, who? Or to better be of Bivol. I would like to see David Benavidez. That would be really good. But I think in all likeliness, um, we get a Charlo. And that would be tough assignment if they do it at 168. I don't believe that Canelo is doing Canelo weight anymore. Catch weights. So I think it's going to be 168. First of all, guys, Canelo at 168 looks like a monster. He's fluid. He ducks and dodges. He counters. He uses legs. Again, in concert and concentration of what his trajectory of shot wants to be. And mentally stabilizes himself to do so. Wow. Like, dangerous. So... Of those aforementioned fighters, um, I'd like to see the Benavides one because I think the Benavides fight would be the hardest challenge for Canelo. Not that I disrespect any other fighter that I just mentioned there. They're all great. Bevel hasn't fought in a while. Okay. Uh, Charlo, he does not have the experience that Canelo has at, you know, going after world-class Opposition, Like, yes, he has fought great guys. Sure. Everyone that steps in the ring, I salute you. You're great. So, but at the end of the day, I I, I think that he breaks him down uh, strategically in a similar fashion that he did with Plant for Canelo. He broke him down. He fought the fight he wanted to fight. And that's what it's all about. You have to make a, a decisions, adjustments. You have to understand... Plan A, plan B, if you're going in against an opponent. And you have to make them think. You have to make them work. Plant did that to a certain extent, but Canelo does that against you and says, no, 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 and no. I'm going to shut everything down that you want to show me. So you better come with something next. You got to have more. You know, b has been out of the ring a long time, so I, I can't foresee him just jumping in and shutting them down. David Benavidez, we all know the story there. He went through trials and tribulations, but he's a very strong man. Very tough guy. Better be of, um, wow. That would be a great one too, because what better be of is that he is also relentless. So then that's going to make Canelo try to think, okay, so we got two opponents that I just mentioned here that are strongholds that have an opportunity that will make Canelo think. If you don't make him think, he will make you pay. All right. It's all about jockeying for position, keeping your wherewithal, everything in concert with your mind, your hands and your foot movement. And I think that those two opponents, Better Biev and Benavidez, would be an amazing match for Canelo. Now, do we get it? We'll see. You know, but for right now, let's just celebrate the amazingness of Canelo. Um, we cannot take anything away from what he's done in the past year. He's active. He's fighting his ass off. And let's face facts, guys. He looks insanely good. So I will say this. Canelo, right now, is my pound-for-pound pound number one fighter on the planet. 
People say, oh, commuterol, and F. listen, F all that, okay? D- that's the thing of the past. L- let's look at what we're at right now with our present, all right? Now, yes, Tyson Fury is there. Terrence Crawford is there. We got a great fight coming up with him and Sean Porter, which I'll unpack at an eventual episode. But if we look at what's going on in boxing right now, there are three major players. Of course, there's NUA and, and all these other great fighters. Sure, fine, no problem. No problem. But I have to say number one right now is Canelo. And I hope you all enjoyed the fight. That was a hell of a fight. Even though my guy, Canelo, who I had winning pretty much every round, dominated, Plant was there. I don't want to take anything away from Caleb. He was certainly there, and he tried his best, but Canelo was just better. And I hope Plant, uh, you know, galvanizes himself, gets himself back on track, and gets back to work because there's no... There's no loss there, only an experience of learning. Yes, he did take tremendous punishment. That 11th round, double, you know, uh, times that he went down was really tough. I mean, that first one, they, they could have stopped it there, and I, I would have been fine with it. I mean, when you get off the mat and you run into the pillar um, and trying to get, like, you look drunk at the club, like, all right. That, that's probably it. If I was in the corner, I would have stopped it. But the guy really wanted it. He had ambition in plant. And he went out there. And uh, like I said, Canelo didn't play with his food. He ate. And that's the result. If I break this down strategically, I mean, what do you want me to say? You know, Canelo was Canelo. He was aggressive. He was a stalker. Plant tried to use certain tools that he has. But Canelo did not enable those tools. Those uh, tools of where plants like a slick boxer, he would not enable that. It wasn't like when Canelo fought Israel de Lara or Mayweather, nothing like that at all. When he's dealing with a slickster, uh, plant is a slickster, but those guys were able to somehow factor that in, whereas plant just had moments of it, but was not able to deliver it. You got to have, listen, fight, in my opinion, fighting is all about distance, range, agility, lateral movements, space, phrasing. And you can't, you cannot stand in the pocket with a guy like Canelo. And then people would like, you know, hey, what Canelo's great counterpuncher, so... What am I supposed to do then if he wants, if Canelo wants to fight on the outside? Um, you got to figure that out. And that's what Canelo makes you do. You got to solve the puzzle. For Plant, he was two in the pocket. What I think he should have done, I think would have been a better tactic, easier said than done. And yes, I was watching it, um, you know, having a beer or whatever the fuck and watching it. So it's easier to say this from the couch, but I mean, this is logic here. You, if you're going to be in the pocket with Canelo, you got to show him something. You got to counter him, make him uh, pay, show him some power. Or you're going to have to move laterally, even on the inside or from the outside, move laterally, shoot a jab, get some respect. Either which way, you could not just stand there or be backed up. Canelo backed him up the whole fight. All right, I said 10 minutes. We're at 14. So I'm going to say um, happy Sunday. Happy week to everyone. We got Monday coming up, everyone. And I wish you all well. I hope you're all keeping your hands clean, keeping safe, and living your greatest life. I'll have a preview very soon with my man, Kevin Perry. We're coming back. Yes, we're going to do a, a show, obviously, about Terrence Crawford. Wow, what a great fight this is going to be against Sean Porter. And uh, I'm sure it's going to be just as entertaining, if not more so, than what we saw last night. But I hope you enjoyed the fights, and I hope you and yours are well. In the meantime, I'm going to say, everyone, stay safe. Thank you.